another United States cruiser, the Biloxi, goes down the ways. The third ship of her class to be launched from this one shipyard within the year. Months ahead of schedule, too. Typical of the job American shipyards are doing on both the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. At another shipyard, the sponsor's party stands in pouring rain for the second christening. And the heavy cruiser Astoria goes to join the ever-growing United States fleet. Named for the old Astoria, which dealt death to the Japs in battles off the Solomon Islands, the new Astoria is one of the most powerfully armored cruisers afloat. American sea power striking never-ending blows at the Axis. Harnessing the rushing waters of the Saguenay River, Canada is completing a mammoth war project capable of producing more power than America's mighty Boulder Dam. Despite the icy cold Canadian winter, workmen are winning a gigantic battle against time and the elements. Already they're a year and a half ahead of schedule. Here goes 41 tons of TNT. By the end of the year, the development will be generating more than a million horsepower. Power for the Dominion's great aluminum industry. For when these power lines begin to hum, Canada will lead the world in the production of aluminum. Three quarters of a billion pounds a year for the United Nations war effort. In America, Red Cross volunteers are busy packing boxes of food and medicines for allied prisoners of war. Boxes containing vitamins, canned meat, coffee, cigarettes, matches, soap. This four-masted Portuguese bark, manned by a neutral crew, is one of several ships especially chartered for the voyage. It's safe passage guaranteed by all belligerent nations. A cargo of mercy for allied soldiers and civilians wherever they are. Once a year, Hollywood honors its brightest stars. Tonight, they also salute the 27,000 men of the cinema industry now serving in the armed forces. Now, Gary Cooper, voted the best actor for 1941, awards the prize for 1942. The winner, Jimmy Cagney for his Yankee Doodle Dandy. From lovely Joan Fontaine, Irish-born Greer Garson wins the award for her unforgettable Mrs. Miniver, the new king and queen of Movieland. Ten years ago, a disastrous forest fire swept through 400 square miles of this vast Western American timberland. Thousands of great fir trees remained standing, stripped and blackened by the flames. Today, lumbermen are reclaiming these fire-blasted trunks, cutting them and getting them to market. Powerful equipment and skilled lumberjacks turn the wasted and once forgotten land into a beehive of activity. Giants of the forest, reclaimed from the dead, now on their way to serve the war needs of the nation. Smart young ground crews of the Royal Australian Air Force on parade. And now, these same young men, dashing through the forest, swinging on ropes over obstacles and across ravines, learning to fight like commandos, all the rough and tumble of primitive jungle warfare, just in case they need it.
a simulated attack, Jap style. And the Australian airmen show the enemy they're as tough in hand-to-hand -hand combat on the ground as they are in the sky. <laughs> At an East African port, wives and children of Italians captured in Ethiopia are sent home by the British. Italian ships, which brought out the colonists to found Mussolini's colonial empire, now take them back under the protection of the International Red Cross. For many of the youngsters, it will be their first view of the mother country. The United Nations have no war with women and children. stranger to American universities is Madame Chiang Kai-shek. 26 years ago, as Mei Ling Sung, she was graduated from this same Wellesley campus with highest honors. Today, as the wife of China's great leader, she returns to meet undergraduates, American girls just like those with whom she attended school. Wellesley is proud and honored to welcome home its most distinguished graduate. United States and Australian troops under General MacArthur advancing through the almost impenetrable jungle for the attack that ended all organized Japanese resistance on the Papuan Peninsula of New Guinea. Guns commanding a narrow beach, the Yanks move into position to cut off the Japs from the sea. Blasted from foxholes, from carefully prepared positions, 15,000 Japs were killed in this one campaign. A Red Cross field hospital cares for allied wounded. Fortified with modern sulfur drugs to prevent infection, most casualties will recover. Thus, the first American offensive to be transported and supplied entirely by air power moves on to new theaters of operation. Army surgeons, sterilizing their precious equipment under the most primitive of conditions, have won a battle too. Their brave efforts have saved many lives, relieved much suffering. Along the trail, a Papuan hut run by friendly natives specializing in steaming tea, a welcome spot for battle-weary men. These Australian and American jungle fighters of General MacArthur have won a real victory. And what's more, they've proved they can beat the Jap in any kind of warfare.